In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at edpuzzle.com. Edpuzzle is a new service, at least fairly new, and it's new to me. Just in the last month or so, I've learned about it, and I'm really excited about Edpuzzle. I think it's a great way to create educational mashups using videos and mashing that video up with my own content, my voice, questions that I want to ask the students, and, and things like that. So let's take a look at how we can use Edpuzzle in the classroom. First off, I'm going to log in, and you'll notice it is free. I'm going to click Log In, and it wants me to log in either as a teacher or as a student. And so I'll just click Teacher, and I'm going to sign in with my Google account, but you can also register and sign in using an email address and, and password and that kind of thing. But here I am in my list of projects that I've created in the past. And I'm just going to go here where it says shortcuts. Let's start by looking at new video. I'm going to click that new video button and it takes me to a page where I have to find a video to use in my Edpuzzle educational mashup. So I could search Edpuzzle for projects that other people have done and I could utilize those. Okay, And you can see there's lots of good examples to, to choose from. Or you can just go right to the v sources of video out on the internet. YouTube, Khan Academy, TED, National Geographic, there's all sorts of different sources of video that you can utilize. I'm going to choose YouTube and I'll just do a search for Schoolhouse Rock adverbs and you can see it brings up a few different results and many of these are just what I'm looking for. This is the one I had in mind. So I'm going to click on that and click use it. Now if I'm not sure it's the right one I could click play. <laughs> and it starts playing, but I'm sure this is the right one. I'm going to click use it and I'm into the project. Now I, on purpose I chose to use Google Chrome for this tutorial and the reason why is because it illustrates a weakness in Google Chrome and uh, a common mistake or problem that you might have when using Edpuzzle. So I, I love Google Chrome. It is my favorite browser right now for various reasons, but there's a flaw in Google Chrome and that is that it does not utilize Java. And there's no notification telling you that this isn't working properly, but I know that it's not because of, of something that I'm not seeing. Basically, there's supposed to be some controls underneath the video here. And I wanted you to see that just so that you'll watch for it as you use Edpuzzle. So I need to switch over and I'm gonna pull up Safari or on a Windows computer, I would pull up Internet Explorer as my second browser. Okay, so I've opened Safari and I've logged into my same account. Now you'll see that I have these these controls here underneath the video and I can use those to edit the video a little bit. Now before I do that I want you to see at the top of the screen here that there's various steps that we're supposed to go through in order to create an Edpuzzle educational mashup using this video and each step is represented with an icon here and you don't really have to use each step but you have to go through it anyway just in case. So here on step one it's got scissors there and that represents crop. This gives me the opportunity to crop this video that I'd like to use. So if I click play it should start Ready, Pop? Yep. Ready, son? Uh-huh. Let's go. Let's go. So it's working great, but I would like to trim out just that beginning where it fades in. I know that's very picky, but let's just say I want to um, maximize every moment of the video. I don't want that fade in. So I'm going to click here in the lower left corner on this red handle, and that's the official term for this kind of thing. It's, it's a handle. I'm going to click on the handle and just drag to the right just a little bit, and that will crop out and de basically delete the very beginning of this video. Now I can click play and I can move this playhead over to the end of the video if I'd like. There's the end of the video and whoever uploaded this apparently put their name at the end with, with a logo for like 10 seconds. Well I want to get rid of that for sure so I'm going to click and drag and trim the end of the video at that point there. So this crop tool is very handy. You may not always need it, but it's, it's good to have it there. I'm going to click the next option, the next stage of creating this Edpuzzle mashup, and, and that's the audio track. So I click it. Notice immediately it's saving my work. And now I've moved on to step two of, of creating this educational mashup. And stage two, 
I don't use this very much, this, this particular stage or this option. The reason why is the option here is if you click this record button, you can replace the audio that's in the video with your own narration. I'll have to basically narrate this entire video from start to finish with my own voice. And I just usually don't want to do that. So there are times when I think this would be useful, but for me, I rarely use it. So I'm going to just skip ahead to the third stage, which is called Audio Notes. And this is similar to Audio Track, but with Audio Notes, you don't have to record the whole thing. Basically, at different points of this video, I can record my thoughts, my ideas, maybe my questions that I want the students to think about uh, throughout the video. So as an example, right at the beginning, before the video even starts, I want to record a message to my students and tell them what to watch for and what they're going to learn. So to do that, it's very simple. You can just click this handle and drop it where you want the, the note to appear and be heard. And then you click this record button. When you do that, Adobe Flash pops up. It needs your permission to access your microphone. So I'm going to click allow and I'll just record a message to my students. OK, guys, we're about to watch a video that will help us learn about adverbs. I want you to be watching carefully some exceptions to that. So I click stop and now it's added that message right at the beginning of this educational mashup video. So what a nice thing. And you can see the, the power of this. I can just place these audio comments from me as the teacher throughout the video. And when the video is played by the students, what will happen is they'll see the, the video start. It'll pause. Okay, guys, we're about to watch a video. And then my audio recording will start. When it's done, the video will resume. And I just skipped through it, but you get the idea. The video resumes. Ready, Pop? Yep. Ready, son? Uh -huh. Let's go. And then when it gets to the next audio recording, same thing will happen. So I just love this feature in Edpuzzle. It's time now, though, to move on to the fourth stage or the fourth set of options. So I'm going to click Quizzes. That's the question mark. And notice that it updates the sound, and it's saving the sound that I recorded. And then it will move on to this next stage. Video has been saved. Now that I'm on to stage four, this is the Quizzes stage. And what I can do is I can add little quiz questions to go with the video. So after my audio recording, I want a question to pop up for the students to answer. So I just grab this handle and drag it where I want it to go, and then I click the question mark button, and now I can ask a question of the students. Now there's three different types of questions or things that are like questions that we can ask. The first is an open-ended question. This would be a question like, what's your favorite adverb? You click done, or if you want, you can add another question right after that first. But um, this will ask the students. It'll pop up on the screen with a question that they can answer in an open-ended way. It doesn't really matter how they answer. And then their answer will be sent to me as the teacher. So I'm going to click Done. And there it's added the question. So I'm going to click Continue at this point. Father, son, and lobby. Now, a little bit later, I would like a quiz to pop up, not just an open-ended kind of question, but one with some specific possible answers. So I'm going to click the question mark again. This time, I'll have it appear in more of a test-like format. So I click test, and I'll say something like, which of these words is not an adverb? Uh, I've put in four possible answers, and notice I could continue adding possible answers. I'm sure there's a limit, but there's a reasonable amount that you could go through and add. Now, before I save this, notice that it's marking this one as the correct answer, and that's not really true. So I need to switch this, and then the correct answer I'll change to a check mark. So they've, I think they've made it quite easy to create these kinds of questions. Now if I want to, I can click Add Next Item and have a second question appear uh, right at this point. I'm just going to go down and click Done and then Continue. Now as a teacher, these questions, I'm seeing the questions off to the side of the video, but when the students view the video, typically the question appears and pops up right on top of the video. So just a difference that you should know about. So I'll click Continue and I could continue to add more and more questions, but I think you get the idea. I just want to mention one last type of question though, and that's if you click on question mark, you can create a comment. This really isn't much of a question. This is more just me making a comment about the video. And that comment will appear right at this moment in the video. So I'm going to click continue now. And let's move on now to the final stage of creating an educational mashup here on Edpuzzle. And that is this done button. You click it 
and it wants to name your video. And by default, it often just gives it the name of the, the video source that, you, that you're working with. Well, I want to change this, and I'll, I'll just title it Review of Adverbs. You choose the language for it, and then click Save and Exit. Now, now that I've created this, notice what it asks me. It says, do you want to assign this video? So I've, I've succeeded in creating a video, but now I could assign it to my students as an actual assignment. So if I say yes, it's going to take me to my assignment and classes window. And you can see that earlier I created three different classes. But I want you to see how to do this. It's really quite easy. I'm just going to add a, a new class, and I'll call this 7th grade grammar review. I choose the subject. This is language arts and then the grade level, 7th grade, and then I click Save Class. So now I have a new class established here. Now, all I have to do to assign this video, to make it more than just a video, but more of a, a learning activity, an assignment that I want the students to look at, and I want to see their, their responses, their answers that they give. All I have to do is make sure there's a check mark on it and a check mark on the class. I could very easily assign it to multiple classes or just to a different class, but this is really the one I want it to be assigned to. And then click Save Assignments. It's that easy. Now, Edpuzzle also has this option here to prevent skipping. And I think this is important. If you don't check this box, when the students are viewing your, your video, they are free to skip ahead to the questions. They can just skip the video entirely and just answer the questions. If they're smart enough, they could you know, do a good job and, and save a lot of time. So I don't want that. I want them to watch the video, learn as much as they can. So I'm gonna make sure that's checked. And then I click Done. So now this class that I just created is assigned to watch this video. Notice what it says. Give this code to your students. Tell them to register and introduce the code. And that's what you want your students to do. Now, if you work with really young students and you don't think they could handle that, you can enroll them yourself. But another option is just to not worry about assigning a class and, and that kind of thing. Instead, just create the Edpuzzle, put a link to it on your website, and the students will be able to go and anonymously, they'll be able to answer the question. So let's look at how you could do that. Here in my videos, I could find one of these videos that I want to share, and I could click on it. It'll load, and it's ready to play now. But here in the upper right corner, there's a share button. And if I click that, it gives me an embed code. And notice I could pick small, medium, large embed code. And then I could click to highlight the embed code and copy it. Do Control C or Command C on a Mac to copy it. You could also try right clicking and copying that way. And then you can go and embed it in a website. So that's Edpuzzle, and I'm really excited about it. I think it's a great tool, and it's an excellent way to use videos in the classroom. If you have any questions or comments about Edpuzzle, I hope you'll post them below. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for students and teachers.